I think the revenue scale will continue for like the next two or three years, probably, for NVIDIA. But the real question is, what is the terminal value? And it's the same thing that Sachs showed in that Cisco slide. People ultimately realized that the value was going to go to other parts of the stack, the application layer. And as more and more money was accrued at the application layer of the internet, less and less revenue multiple and credit was given to Cisco. And that's nothing against Cisco because their revenue continued to compound. Caroline Woods is at the New York Stock Exchange with some analyst notes, some commentary this morning. And uh, it's a Monday and it's another week in the US markets, Caroline. So let's talk some NVIDIA. How about that? Yeah, NVIDIA always in the headlines and getting another price target hike uh, on Wall Street. But just taking a look, shares on the rise up about seven tenths of a percent this morning. Heading into today, they had added nine percent last week, up 20 percent so far in June, up 166 percent year to date. And then adding to those gains today, as I said, up a little less than one percent. The, the analysts that hiked their price target on shares was from Susquehanna, raised to 160. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll explore why NVIDIA is poised for significant growth and why its stock is considered a strong buy. NVIDIA has firmly established itself as a leader in the AI chip market. The demand for AI technology is skyrocketing across various sectors, including healthcare, automotive, and finance. AI chips are at the core of this technological revolution, enabling faster processing and more sophisticated machine learning algorithms. NVIDIA's advanced GPUs, graphics processing units, have become the gold standard for AI applications. These chips are designed to handle the immense computational loads required for AI tasks, making NVIDIA the go-to provider for companies looking to integrate AI into their operations. From 145 previously, kept a positive rating on shares. The analyst noted that the target was based on a ratio of 51.5 times as forecast for NVIDIA's adjusted earnings per share for 2025, saying while this multiple is higher than the group median, median of 28 and a half, we view it as warranted as the company is well positioned to take advantage of flourishing end markets. I will note that 160 is the highest price target on the street by about $10, $150 a share was the former highest. Uh, there are a few 150 price targets on NVIDIA. It implies about 20% upside from current levels. Now, despite the fact that 91% of analysts still have a buy rating on shares of NVIDIA, Oliver, the median price target for NVIDIA now is 125. And as you can see, it's trading just below 133 right now. So below, or I'm sorry, above that, that median price target. So uh, I, I would doubt that there's probably a lot of analysts that want to bet against NVIDIA at that point. So something tells me we might see more analysts uh, kind of making adjustments to those price targets given the uh, discrepancy between the buy ratings and, and the price target. Boy, uh, the uh, uh, burden falls heavy on NVIDIA right now, but uh, you know, after Broadcom, Oracle and others, at least it's you know not alone, but the analyst party and uh, you know, on NVIDIA is still in a world of its own, I think in uh, a way, because generally, you know, the, um, the move here is kind of uh, reached some of the, I mean, a lot of those expectations to the point, uh, but the commentary still so, so skewed and so powerfully in one direction when there's over 70 analysts covering the stock. I mean, like, <laughs> how many shops are there, like sell side firms, like, you know, and it's, it's just a, a huge amount of expectations just from the number of people that covered alone like even when it's at their targets with so many people saying buy i've never even seen that much coverage on a stock before how many analysts are there? Well, there are at least 70, because, <laughs> right. as you said, or more than 70 uh, actually cover the stock. But yeah, the, the, the commentary largely positive for NVIDIA. I haven't really seen any um, commentary that, oh, this is a, the stock that's run too far too fast. If anything, it's just totally. analysts, you know, hiking those price targets. But yeah, heavy lies the crown. So we'll have to see. We know competition is heating up, but NVIDIA really first to the game and, you know, uh, really has a leg up and uh, is getting rewarded for it in terms of share price. I mean, now it's up almost 170% year to date. Yeah, like Apple, uh, there's under 60 analysts to cover Apple, you know, so uh, for perspective, it's like, I don't know where a lot of these people came from, but uh, fine, uh, so, okay, party on. The AI chip market is expected to grow significantly in the coming years. According to industry forecasts, 
the market could reach unprecedented levels as more industries adopt AI technologies. This growth is fueled by the increasing reliance on AI for data analysis, automation, and decision-making processes. NVIDIA is perfectly positioned to capitalize on this trend. Its continued innovation in AI hardware and software ensures that it remains at the forefront of this burgeoning market. By continually improving the performance and efficiency of its chips, NVIDIA is not just keeping up with the demand, but driving it forward. Innovation is at the heart of NVIDIA's strategy. The company is not content with resting on its laurels. Instead, it consistently pushes the boundaries of what its technology can achieve. Recent advancements in NVIDIA's chip architecture have resulted in substantial performance improvements, further solidifying its competitive edge. For instance, NVIDIA's recent introduction of the Hopper GPU architecture represents a significant leap forward in AI processing power. This new architecture promises to deliver unprecedented performance, which will be critical as AI models become more complex and demanding. Right? And they did an incredible job, but the valuation got cut. So, Freiburg, if we're looking at this chart, the winner of Netflix, the, the winner of the Cisco chart might in fact be somebody like Netflix. They actually got you know, hundreds of millions of consumers to give them Google cash. And Facebook. And then you have Google and Facebook as well, generating all that traffic. And then YouTube, of course. But who do you see the winner here as in terms of the application layer? Who are the billion customers here who are going to spend 20 bucks a month, five bucks a month, whatever it is? So here, well, I mean, let me just start with this important point. If you look at where that revenue is coming from, to Chamath's point, it's coming from big cloud service providers. So Google, and others are building out clouds that other application developers can build their AI tools and applications on top of. So a lot of the build out is in these cloud data centers that are owned and operated by these big tech companies. The 18 billion of data center revenue that NVIDIA realized is revenue to them, but it's not an operating expense to the companies that are building out. So this is an important point on why this is happening at such an accelerated pace. When a big company buys these chips from NVIDIA, they don't have to, from an accounting basis, mark it as an expense in their income statement. It actually gets booked as a capital expenditure in the cash flow statement. It gets put on the balance sheet and they depreciate it over time. And so they can spend $20 billion of cash because Google and others have $100 billion of cash sitting on the balance sheet. And they've been struggling to find ways to grow their business through acquisitions. One of the reasons is they there aren't enough companies out there that they can buy at a good multiple that can give them a good increase in profit. The other one is that antitrust authorities are blocking all of their acquisitions. And so what do you do with all that cash? Well, you can build out the next gen of cloud infrastructure and yeah. you don't have to take the hit on your P&L by doing it. So it ends up on the balance sheet and then you depreciate it over typically four to seven years. So that money gets paid out on the, on the income statement at these big companies over a seven year period. So there's a really great accounting and uh, M&A environment driver here that's causing the big cloud data center providers to step in and say, this is a great time for us to build out the next generation of infrastructure that could generate profits for us in the future because we've got all this cash sitting around. We don't have to take a PL hit. We don't have to acquire a cash burning business. And, you know, frankly, we're not going to be able to grow through M&A because of antitrust right now anyway. So there's a lot of other motivating factors that are causing this near-term acceleration as they're trying to find ways to grow. Yeah. Let's talk about NVIDIA's stock performance. Recently, NVIDIA's stock has been on a tear, reflecting the company's robust growth and market potential. In fact, NVIDIA is now the second most valuable stock in the world, a testament to investor confidence and the company's strategic positioning. This meteoric rise in stock value is backed by impressive financial metrics. For example, NVIDIA's data center revenue grew a staggering 427% year over year, reaching $22.6 billion. This growth underscores the increasing demand for AI solutions in the data center space, a trend that is likely to continue. NVIDIA's financial performance has been nothing short of spectacular. The company recently reported earnings per share of $6.12, easily surpassing the consensus estimate of $5.60 per share. Such strong earnings are a clear indicator of NVIDIA's operational efficiency and market dominance. Moreover, NVIDIA's gross margins are far ahead of the competition, standing at an impressive 78.4%. High margins reflect the company's ability to command premium pricing for its advanced products, 
further enhancing its profitability. Given these factors, it's no wonder that analysts are bullish on NVIDIA. Many believe that, despite the recent surge in its stock price, NVIDIA remains undervalued. The company's strong market position, coupled with the anticipated growth in the AI sector, makes NVIDIA a compelling investment opportunity. In conclusion, NVIDIA is not just leading the AI chip market, it is shaping the future of AI technology. With a solid track record of innovation, impressive financial performance, and a clear path for future growth, NVIDIA is well positioned to maintain its market leadership. Analysts are optimistic about the company's prospects, making NVIDIA a strong buy in the eyes of many investors. Well, I, know this, that, I know that was an accounting point, but I think it's a really important I think it's a valid here. one. If you if 100 billion gets spent this year, you divide it by four, 25 billion in revenue would have to come from that or something in that range. Yeah. And so, Sachs, any guesses? Do you have to just keep in mind, I think Freeberg, what you said is very true for GCP spend, but not necessarily for Google spend. It's true for AWS spend, but not necessarily for Amazon spend. And it's true for Azure spend, not true for Microsoft spend. And it's largely not true for Tesla and, and Facebook because they don't have clouds. So I think the question to your point that Ben, for obvious reasons, NVIDIA doesn't disclose it is what is the percentage of that 21 billion that just went to those cloud providers that they'll then Capitalize. expose to, to, to everybody else versus what was just absorbed. Because at Facebook, Mark had that video about how many H100s, that's all for him. Right, but it is still it is still capitalized is my point. So they don't have to book that as an expense. It sits on the balance sheet. Yeah, sure, and they, can, and they earn it down over time. You're helping to explain why these big cloud service providers are spending so much on the data center Because they have so much down. cash, because they're very right. profitable and there's nowhere else to put the money. Right. Well, so that would seem to indicate that this is more in the category of one-time build-out than sustainable ongoing revenue. I think the, the big question is the one that Jamath asked, which is, what's the terminal value of NVIDIA? I think a, a, like a simple framework for thinking about that is, what is the total addressable market or TAM related to GPUs? And then what is their market share going to be? Right now, their market share is something like 91%. That's clearly going to come down, but their moat appears to be substantial. Uh, the Wall Street analysts I've been listening to think that in five years, they're still going to have 60 something percent market share. So they're going to have a substantial percentage of this market or this TAM. Then the question is, I think, with respect to TAM is what is one time build out versus steady state? Now, I think that clearly there's a lot of build out happening now. That's almost like a backfill of capacity that people are realizing they need. But even the numbers you're seeing this quarter kind of understate it because, first of all, NVIDIA was supply constrained. They could not produce enough chips to satisfy all the demand. Their revenue would, would have been even higher if they had more capacity. Second, you just look at their forecast. So the fiscal year that just ended, they did around 60 billion of revenue. They're forecasting 110 billion for the fiscal year that just started. So they're already projecting to almost double based on the demand that they clearly have visibility into already. So it's very hard to know exactly what the terminal or steady state value of this market's gonna be. Even once the cloud service providers do this big build out, presumably there's always gonna be a need to stay up to date with the latest chips, right? 